Maranatha, our Lord is coming. I am Dr. Charles L. Pack of Thy Kingdom Come Ministries, and this is Prophecy Watch, reaching all of North America by satellite and the world through the Internet. With me today is my friend and co-host, Mr. Philip Goodman. Dr. Pack, it's so good to be with you today. Friends, it's good to have you with us. Dr. Pack, today, prophecy according to the Bible. Yes, and Phil, in this book here, in 2 Peter 1, verse 21, it says, For this word came not by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. We believe it's God's word, not man's word, Phil. Absolutely. And just like on the chart here, we believe all these prophecies either have been fulfilled or they're going to be fulfilled. And so, yes. friends, let's go to the studio now for today's message by Mr. Goodman. Our world is traveling toward its date with destiny. Signs indicate the last days are drawing near. No one knows the exact date or time, but today's headlines provide evidence that the Earth's time is short. Join us for the next half hour to discover what the Bible teaches us about the future. Welcome to Prophecy Watch. Friends, we're so glad that you're with us today in this exciting study about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, we'll explain that meaning a little bit later as we get into the program right now. I want you to have your Bibles open to Revelation chapter 6 and be ready to do some page turning because we're going to the Word of God, no other source. The Word of God is the bottom line of Prophecy Watch Television. So we're so glad you're with us today. Let's look at Revelation chapter 6 in a moment. Right now, I want you to look at the depiction on your screen, this map of the Middle East. Friends, this is the focus of God's program in the end days. The whole program of God for the latter days, what the Bible calls the last days or the end days, is going to return to the lands of the Bible, the Middle East, specifically Israel. You can see Israel, tiny nation that it is, right there surrounded by all of these other biblical lands. They are in the headlines today. And friends, as we continue on here, I want to show you some headlines and you think biblically with me as we read these because it is amazing. As a matter of fact, it is astonishing how we open the, the papers or we turn on the television to the daily news, to CNN, CBS, ABC, it doesn't make any difference. The daily news is bombarding us constantly with headlines that are actually biblical headlines of the last days. Here's just a few examples. This headline right here says, The Supreme Court said it will take up the constitutionality of the Ten Commandments displays on government, land, and buildings. And, of course, that includes the schools, too, where our children, we raise up our little ones to carry on the future of this nation. Isn't it amazing that the U.S. Supreme Court has to even consider such a question as to whether or not the Ten Commandments are constitutional uh, in terms of public displays in our public buildings? That's where we're at today, and this brings up biblical prophecies. It brings to mind the many prophecies in the Bible that says that there will be a great departure from the Word of God in the last days, particularly within the Christian church, the professing Christian church. Another headline, a secret report prepared by the foreign ministry of Israel warns that Israel's global standing could deteriorate in the coming decade and even resemble the pariah status of apartheid South Africa. What it is saying is that Israel will be isolated in the last days on the map of the world by the nations of the United Nations. It goes on specifically to say that Israel and Europe will find themselves on a collision course. Again, these are the headlines that we're reading today, friends. And as we read these headlines, we're reminded of the many prophecies in the Bible that say that Israel will be isolated as, a, as the people of God, the chosen people of God, that nation will be isolated in the last days from all of the other nations of the world. In this headline, it specifically mentions Europe, or what the Bible calls the revived Roman Empire on a collision course with Israel. Another headline, very prominent. Iran and Russia say that they are close to finalizing a long-delayed protocol on returning spent 
nuclear fuel to Russia. It's no secret that Russia's nuclear fuel energies and capacities and all of the scientific information that goes with it has been leaking out since the fall of communism to rogue nations who take that material, that nuclear fissionable material, and turn it into nuclear weapons. Specifically in this headline, Iran is one of those. And we know that Iran is one of the nations listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 as one of the compatriots of Russia, one of the confederate nations of Russia that will come down upon the land of Israel in the last days. And they certainly are gaining nuclear capacity right now. Another headline, Police Mall Limiting Access to Temple Mount Mosque Following Warnings by Experts that Solomon Stables, that series of old ancient stables of King Solomon that are underneath the Temple Mount, could collapse. In other words, the Temple Mount, where the temple is to be rebuilt one day, but today is occupied by the Dome of the Rock, the, the uh, Muslims' uh, holy site in Israel, what uh, the Bible would consider a pagan site setting on the Temple Mount, that that is about to possibly collapse. And if it collapses, that could be the uh, reason or the trigger that would uh, make it possible for the Jews to raise up that final temple, to rebuild the temple that must stand when the Antichrist appears on the earth. In the headlines, the possibility of that occurring. Then another headline, European leaders uh, signed the first European Union Constitution. The European Union's first constitution that brings together all of those nations of Europe into what the Bible calls the revived Roman Empire, the restoration of the Roman Empire predicted in Daniel and Revelation many times. It is occurring as we speak. Finally, one more headline here. And by the way, all of these headlines converge into a single week's worth of headlines. It's like this every single week. So it doesn't make any difference what week you're seeing this particular broadcast. Your headlines are going to say the same thing, that all of these headlines are picturing or depicting portrayals in Bible prophecy that will occur in the last days. Here are one final headline. It says, Turkey was expected to insist on the unconditional backing of the European Union uh, powerhouses, Germany and France, for its bid to join the European Union in three-way talks. Why is that important? Because Turkey is the key bridge nation to completing the revival of the Roman Empire. Turkey is the bridge into the Middle East, which must be part of that revived Roman Empire. Well, friends, all of that tells us that Jesus must be very near, according to the Bible. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24, He said, when you see all of these things begin to happen, He said, recognize that I am near even at the door. So friends, as we speak, Jesus is near. Now I want you to take another look at your screen up there and let's see what Bible-believing uh, students of prophecy were saying back at the turn of the, the century, back in the, actually all the way back in this particular quote right here, 1864 during the Civil War. One of the great Bible believers, Dr. John Cumming, he said this, he said, the predictions of their restoration, talking about the Jews to the land. Now remember, in 1864, there wasn't a hint of that ever happening. But Dr. John Cumming, uh, at that time, read his Bible. He read his scriptures, and he believed them. So he says, the prediction of the re restoration of the Jews are in words as definite, only not yet fulfilled. But one closing act is yet wanting to complete the whole. Their restoration is predicted and demanded. Who will stretch out his hand to move the scene and call forth the actors? Isn't that a remarkable statement when it didn't seem possible on the scene of world history, yet his Bible told him that the Jews would return to the land in the end days? Friends, you and I are living in the generation when that is occurring. Now, I want you to look at the next statement on your screen there. Here's another one. This one was 1866 from James Grant, another Bible believer. He said, the personal coming of Christ will not take place until the Jews are restored 
to their own land. It did not look like it was anywhere remotely on the scene of history when this man wrote that. But he was a great man of faith and he believed it. Let's see what's happening today. Look at this map on your screen. Notice all of those nations uh, depicted in the various colors. Europe and Asia, Africa, on into the Mideast. Now look at all of those lines converging on one point of the map. All of those lines, those arrows, are going down to Israel. That is the routes traveled and the uh, original lands from which the Jews in our day and time are fulfilling Bible prophecy, what those earlier uh, Bible believers could not see in their day except through the eyes of faith in Scripture, we see happening in our day. It still continues to occur. The Jews are returning to the land of Israel, the great super sign of the end days that Jesus is near. Now take a look at this map right here. This is very interesting when you do a little analytical um, uh, look at it. Look at the Middle East there, that pink uh, series of nations lifted out right in the middle of the map where that thick black line comes out. Now, it's very appropriate that that, that line is black because it's oil. It's the root of oil coming out of the Middle East to all of the other nations of the world, going to the five continents. Look at the different uh, roots that this oil is taking, and all of these nations are surviving on that energy resource that great resource of oil pools buried in the Middle East. What's interesting is, is that they are reliant upon the Middle East for their very existence and the existence of their economies. Now, as you read the inscription there, just reverse those lines. Since all of those nations are reliant upon Mideast oil, it makes sense that uh, they would eventually reject Israel if for that one reason only because the Mideast basically is against Israel. All of those Arabic nations surrounding Israel are sworn enemies of the chosen people of God. So the nations are ultimately going to reject Israel and cling to their oil. The, the passage there from Zechariah 12.3 says, And it will come about in that day that I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who lift it will be severely injured and all the nations of the earth will be gathered against it. All of those nations reliant upon that Mideast oil. Well, ultimately, it's not going to be just the oil, but they're going to be gathered against Jesus Christ according to the Bible prophecies. Now, friends, let's go to Revelation chapter 6. As these headlines point to the near return of Jesus, that He is near even at the door, we want to see what Revelation chapter 6 has to say about the last days and the second coming of Jesus. The context in Revelation chapter 6 is this. The Son of God in heaven is given a great seven-sealed book. The Bible in uh, Revelation 5 says that nobody else in all of the universe is qualified to open that seven-sealed book. And so Jesus begins to rip those seven seals off of that book. Now, if you look at the depiction on your screen right now, you can see a picture of Jesus depicted as the Lion of Judah, as the passage says in Revelation 5, and also as the uh, Lamb of God. Uh, you can see him opening that seven-sealed book, and he begins to rip off those seals. Why? Because he is the sovereign Lord. He is the Lord of history and the Lord of the planet. And so let's continue on here and read now as we come out of Revelation chapter 5, Taking those first seals, we're going to look at the first four seals, what the Bible refers to as the four horsemen. The four horsemen, or what uh, prophecy students sometimes call the horsemen of the apocalypse. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. Why that title? Because revelation means the unveiling. And the apocalypse is the term for that. It is the last day's book. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures, these are four angelic beings, saying as with a voice of thunder, Come. Verse 2, And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. 
Friends, what is this white horse? And as we think about it, what are these four horses that we're going to be introduced to in this four-part series on the four horsemen of the apocalypse? I want you to um, think right now in terms of great, powerful forces. These horses represent great, powerful forces that will come upon the whole planet. Right now, I want to pull up the globe. I'm going to reach over here and pull it into our view right here. Here we have a globe, a picture of the entire planet, and these four horses that we're going to look at, and right now we're looking particularly at the first one, are going to be powerful forces that come across the entire planet in the last days. And friends, today we're seeing the foreshadow of that already. These great powerful forces are coming across the planet as we speak. What is this horse number one? Let's break it down and let's analyze it just a minute, but let's think in terms not just of the horse, the powerful force that will come across the planet, but also of the rider on that horse because that is a person, a real person. First of all, let's look at the horse right here. It says, And I looked, and behold, a white horse. White represents uh, a great peace movement, and it also represents false righteousness or false religion. Both of those are wrapped into one. Because in the last days, we're going to see a uniting of all of the world's religions in a false religious movement that will encourage or will endorse world peace. And friends, as we talk, we're seeing that happen right now. We're seeing that the world's religions are trying to move Jesus off of the discussion table, get rid of the Word of God, move the Bible out of the uh, factors that are being determined in terms of truth, and they are trying to unite around false peace and bringing in world peace with the endorsement of world religion. I want you to look at the depiction on your screen right now, and here is a typical headline, Religious Leaders Open Historic Parliament. Friends, this first occurred in uh, 1993, and then by the year 2002, we saw a tremendous, the world's greatest uh, unification of all the religions of the world came together over in Assisi, Italy, led by the Pope of the Catholic Church. All of the religions uh, were invited from Asia, from Africa, from the West. They all came down, all of them except Bible-believing Christianity. And they came and they met. And the bottom line topic was world peace. The, the endorsement of all the religions of a great peace that dispenses with Jesus as the Prince of Peace. And that's exactly what this first horse predicts. It is a white horse, it says. And it says, he who sat on it. Let's look at the he who sat on it. That's very important. That is the Antichrist. He is a false peacemaker. He is a false prince of peace. And he is, uh, he is the leader of a false one world religious system. In the last days, he will rise up uh, bringing in this false peace and also this... Um, deceptive religious movement. And it says, He who sat on it had a bow. Now here's one of the reasons that we recognize that in fact this is a false peace movement because he is carrying a bow, but he has no arrows. Other places in the Bible, when you get over to Ezekiel chapter 39, it talks about a bow with arrows and the great war that occurs in the last days in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. But here he has a bow with no arrows. So he goes out uh, with control of great military forces, but he goes out on a mission of diplomacy and false peacemaking. And it goes on to say, and a crown was given to him. The crown tells us that he will be successful. He will His uh, false diplomatic mission across the Mideast and ultimately into the revived Roman Empire, Western Europe and, and the Mideast, and finally across the entire planet, his false peace mission will be accepted and received by the world. And he will come out uh, promising global peace. In essence, a millennium 
a millennium of peace, just like uh, Hitler promised in World War II, a thousand years of peace. Here comes the ultimate peacemaker right here with that. So he has a crown that d indicates that, in fact, he will rule the world at one point with this false peace. And it was given to him the crown, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Now, friends, as we continue to look at what all of this means, we know that the bow means military might, but the arrows mean that it is not used because no arrows are in this passage right here. We've seen that the white horse uh, means false peace movement and also a false one world religious system. Let's talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. I want you to go with me over to Matthew chapter uh, 7. Now, by the way, in this series, we're going to look at the real peacemaker, the real prince of peace. That is the fifth horse. And that is shown in Revelation chapter 19, when Jesus comes riding out of the sky on a white horse as the prince of peace. And he comes as the true prince make, uh, peacemaker and the prince of peace and the word of God. But the false always replicates the true. And so we have a false peacemaker here. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 says this, Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. False prophets, false peacemakers, and false religions always appear to be religious. They always appear as the true. Just as this white horse with the Antichrist on it looks like the white horse that Jesus rides when he returns in Revelation chapter 19, so will this false peacemaker be. Just as a false prophet wears sheep's clothing rather than wolves' clothing, in fact, the passage here in Matthew 7.15 tells us that inwardly he is as a wolf. I want to show you another passage very similar. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. It says this, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves. Look at that word, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. So, friends, here we have a, a disguised servant of righteousness who inwardly is a ravenous wolf. He is actually the Antichrist coming in on this deceptive white horse with a movement of world peace being endorsed by the world's religions. A powerful, powerful movement in the end days. A political, economic, religious, uh, military movement that all of the other four horsemen will indicate to us. Now take a look at the picture on your, uh, the picture on your screen. The Bible actually sees this false religion as a great harlot. And here is a depiction of that harlot, all dressed in pearls and all of the precious stones. Uh, but actually, in God's eyes, a harlot. Revelation chapter 17 describes that. That's what this white horse, uh, ridden by the Antichrist, will bring in in the last days. Here's another picture. At the end of World War II, we thought that war was over. The United Nations was created. And all of the Nazi Germany and all of the uh, powers of Japan, they were all junked in the trash can. And the world tried to unite. It has been screaming for peace ever since. It has not come, friends, but the false peace movement is coming. Now, I want you to listen to our speaker right now, Dr. David Reagan, a speaker at the Tulsa International Prophecy Conference several times, and we'll be back again in the future. Dr. David Reagan of Lamb and Lion Ministries, we asked him this question, Will Israel ever see peace? If so, how and when? Listen to Dr. Reagan. Israel will never see peace until the Prince of Peace returns. There's always going to be conflict in the Middle East, and it will continue up until the very day that Jesus returns in what is called the Second Coming. He will return as the Prince of Peace. At that point, he is going to gather every Jew on planet Earth who has put their faith in him as their Messiah, and he will take them back to Israel where they will be the uh, prime nation of the world, and the the blessings to the world will flow through the Jewish people. Jesus will reign on Mount Zion in Jerusalem as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I believe David in his glorified body will reign as the Prince of Israel. We in our glorified bodies will be scattered over this earth to help with this reign, and that's when the peace will come, not until then.
Well, friends, you heard Dr. David Reagan say that, yes, there will be a day when Israel will, be see, will see peace, but it will only be when that fifth horseman, remember we're talking about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but there's actually a fifth one. When that fifth horseman in Revelation chapter 19 returns, I want you to re read, you, I want to read you just a little bit about that fifth horseman. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, Revelation 19.11 in your Bibles, Revelation 19.11, and behold, a white horse. Now remember the first horse, uh, the white horse was ridden by the Antichrist, false, but here's the true one. A white horse, and he who sat upon it is called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. And you go on down to verse 13, and he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood. He died for our sins, friend friends, and His name is called the Word of God. Friends, with that in mind, I want you to think about this fifth horseman, the Prince of Peace, who is coming back to solve all of the world's problems. But He needs to solve your problem right now if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen to Dr. Charles Pack. Friend, after hearing this message by Philip Goodman, I'm sure your heart has been moved, particularly if you're not saved. You know, the Bible is very clear. In Hebrews 9, 27, it says this, And as it is appointed unto men, wants to die, but after this the judgment. I want to tell you, suddenly you may just pass out of this life and go into the next life. Where are you going to spend eternity? Will it be in heaven or will it be in hell? The Bible is very clear. It's appointed unto men wants to die. You're not going to escape death. That's something you cannot escape. You ought to be ready to die if you should die today or tomorrow. It's appointed unto men once to die, but after this what? The judgment. And so you're going to be judged for your sins, and if you're not saved, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire where you'll suffer for your sins forever. Will you trust the Lord today? And then write and tell us about it. And we want to send you a little booklet absolutely free and postpaid to help you to grow in grace and in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Will you do that?